Shalom Israel, Shalom. I want to welcome everyone to King James Bible University. I'm Elder Michael Johnson with the Lost Sheep of Israel. Uh, getting a few things uh, straight right now. Um, trying to just make sure a few things is correct. But today we also will be having a, uh, a open house today, which we'll be going through and showing you the differences um, on what's needed because everyone will have to be briefed to go in, in which I do know a lot of people um, ask just because you signed up that you also will be part of the, of the class. But if you have not been briefed, you will not be part of the class because the briefing is very important because we need to know who you are, not something being secretive, but we need to know who you are. So with that, <clears throat> we're gonna be going through that and right after the class, I'm gonna provide you with everything you need to go to the class, to where you can actually do the open house and then we can do the briefing. So you will not need um, a password, username to get in there but you will need your webcam or audio available because I need to brief you and I need to make sure. And we did have some people came in some briefings where they would come in, but they would make sure both of them were turn, turned off. So I couldn't, um, I couldn't uh, validate them. Now those are automatically kicked out. So I don't have no problem doing that. So with that, we're gonna get uh we're gonna get started with this 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 class, and then we're gonna go into it, and then right after class, we're gonna go into the Moab, and I'll give you all the information from there. So we're gonna to get to understanding, but today we're going through what is our pu uh, purpose here on Earth, and do you really want to know what your actual purpose here is on this Earth? See, because what I propose here on earth is the question of, of all questions. You know, so thinking, and most people think that they are to enjoy the carnal world and the things of this world. Some think this world also evolves around whatever they do. Some think that they, you know, as people think, the one who has the most toys at death wins. We are here for a reason and a purpose. Understand what I'm saying? We are here for a reason and a purpose. And it's not to be here to play games to life as we do. We have enjoyments, however, we also must know what thus said our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and what we can and cannot do while we're here. He gave us bodies made from the dust of the earth, and we must treat them as he commanded us and not let it rule us. These are keys that we need to understand as we go into this, this teaching. These are not uh, these are not, not ours. These are given for a reason. Have you ever seen the ground that moves? Again, have you ever seen the ground that moves? And that's and that's what we're doing right now. The ground that moves. So, well, next time you look at your brother, your sister, your mother, your father and you look at them, next time you'll see the ground moving. But on the other side, let's count the understanding and let's look at the most high, making the name upon the earth. Our bodies are it. This is how he is doing it. So we cannot eat or commit anything, including abominations in it. Are we understanding and going to get the understanding? exactly what we can do in these bodies and what we cannot do in these bodies. So let's go to Deuteronomy 7 and pick it up 26. It says, neither shall thou bring in, bring an abomination into thy house. 
least there thou be cursed thing like it, but thou sh shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, meaning hate it, for it is a cursed thing. So abominations being in the house of the Most High. He's telling you this is what you cannot do. If it's cursed from the Most High, it's also cursed if you ingest it or do anything within the Most High's house. These are what the Most High do not like. He abhorred it. Abhorred mean hate. And he is, and this is his house. And we think we can do whatever we want with it. And it's his, not yours. Have you ever have you ever lend someone one something? You know, you have some people where you you lend them different things. You lend them your vehicle, clothing, different things. And when you lend it, you want it back the same way it went out. The exact same way it went out. And it had no problem when it left. And it better not have any issues when it come back. The Most High said, do not bring any abominations in his house or anything he hates. So we need to know his rules of his house in which you're in right now. Let's be clear. So we need to know the rules in abominations, things that is hated and not to be in his house in the rules that we must follow while we're in his house. Let's go to second, first Corinthians three sixteen. pick it up. It says, know ye not that you, ye are the temple of your power. It's clear. <clears throat> we are the temples of the most high. His spirit dwells in us, meaning we are his houses, the place where he dwells. And it tells you that in that the spirit of Yahweh dwells in you. So this is the power that's given that was spoken in John, the first chapter. Once the most high moves in, you are defiling it, which we will be coming back to in, in one little minute. Because if you defile it, he leaves that house, but he does other things with that house. So why you think there are many mansions in his house? This is why he says it. In my father's house, there are many mansions. This is why they use that type of language. Because what? He's dwelling with him. And we dwelling with him, he's dwelling in you. However, if you treat your body or your temple in any and every which way that you want. And plus, it's already, I told you, it's not yours. But you treat it like trash. What I'm saying, you treat it like trash, you, 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 you do whatever you wanna do with it. You eat whatever you wanna eat. You treat it and, and, and just abuse that body on everything that the Most High told you not to. The Most High made plans for that body and that soul too. He also made sure this is clear. Verse 17, if any man defile the temple of Yahweh, <clears throat> him shall Yahweh destroy. For that temple is Yahweh is holy, which temple ye are. So if anyone defiles that temple, he made this perfectly clear at the beginning. If that temple is, 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 is defiled and what the outcome is, he would destroy that temple by the one and owner of that temple. <clears throat> Excuse me. And who is the owner of the temple is the most high. Your body is not owned by you, period. This is what we need to understand. It's not owned by you. And it's the owner of the body is the controller of the body. First Corinthians 16, 19. So what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, in you, which ye have of Yahweh, and ye are not your own. 
you do not own this body. So many of us have a problem with this issue. You didn't purchase anything within your body, any of the organs or anything about it. You have not purchased nothing. You are not the owner of the body. You have not paid for not one limb, not one ear, not one eye, not one lip, not one teeth, not one nose. You have not paid for this body. Not even paid for this life, no organs, no hearing, no sight. And then you lie to yourself saying, this is my body. Your body do not belong to you, it's the most high, not ours. This is clear. First, let's get the understanding of things you need to keep out of his house. And we're gonna go to foods. These are just a few things we're gonna get understanding. These are things that is simple that he's telling you to keep out of his house. He don't want it in there. He hate it. And if he hate it, you should be hating it. Because the simple thing is he's telling you, he said he abhorred it. So you keep those abominations out of his house. And let's look at these. And we're going to go to Leviticus 11, start at verse 9. He says, These shall ye eat of all the waters whatsoever, have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So he going to bring it to the house whatsoever have fins and scales that's in the waters. But he's going to start defining this because whatever is in the waters and the seas and the rivers, you can eat. However, he's going to define this. And all that have not fins nor scales in the seas, and in the rivers, and all that moves in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. An abomination. Anything that do not have fins or scales or in the seas in the rivers, anything that's living in the water that do have fins or scales, you can eat. But if it don't, eating that is an abomination to you. Because what? Your body do not belong to you. Again. It's clear. It belongs to the Most High. These are things that he hates and being for your body for consumption. So if you're gonna, if you need the consumption to where you can keep the body to keep continue, you he's telling you what you can eat that is clean and what you should not be eating and you cannot eat. So he created them for that purpose. That's the, so by any means, everybody say well everything that God created is good. That's clear, but everything has a purpose. And those are not for your consumption. So the purpose is not for his temple to consume them for food. Many people love, especially Israel, love catfish. Love it. But tell you a little side note. We know that catfish are bottom, bottom, bottom dwellers. So bottom fish dwellers also eat anything that's at the bottom. That means... If people are, are dumped at the bottom of the water, they're eating on that too. Anything that's dead, dead animals <clears throat> that has fell into the water, they eat on that too. Eat anything dead. And we have some fishers out there and, they, and they'll tell you, they normally use the stinkiest meat and stinkiest uh, uh, foods to actually catch the, 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 the bigger catfish. But these are problems that he's saying we should not eat. Because why? It has no scales. He hate them in his temple. He molded us from clay and from dust of the ground. And he put us the way he wanted, not the way we want us to be. So when you have people and they also, they eating clams, crabs, or what we call sea roaches and water sea bugs and lobsters. These are abominations to the Most High. These are things he do not want in his temple. He's clear on this. I'm extremely clear. We are not to be doing this. It's the simplest one. And I could have went to swine because that's also a very prevalent thing. 
throughout this world. He do not want you defiling the temple. Why? Because they are an abomination. They should be even an abomination unto you. So if it's an abomination to him, it's an abomination to you. Why? Again, our bodies belong to who? Him. We are in the seed, and the seed is in itself in us. I'll say that again. We are in the seed, and the seed is in itself in us. So how we are Israel is the same as being in itself, reproducing itself within itself. Not you're going to touch the flesh or swine, maybe not today, but you know one thing that was going to happen. In the best way, look at it this way. This is what we always have to remember. Genesis 2 and 27. So Yahweh could create a man in his own image. So if he created him in his own image, <clears throat> he's telling you what not to what not to do with with this body. It's created in his image. So those those foods have things it it is it, the purpose for. And that's what they are to be for. But you are created in his own image, in the image Yahweh created he him. Male and female created he them. So he made the image, created male and female in his image. So it leaves us on what was going to happen on how we will reproduce what? His image. This is what we're doing. We create, recreating his image, but we defiling the temple. We defiling that. Verse 28. And he blessed them, and Yahweh said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over all the fowls of the air, over, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. These were blessed, and he spoke to them to be fruitful, multiply within itself, as others did above. As you would see, some would teach also that Genesis 2, 7 he created Adam, which is not true. See, because you got to remember, he formed E.D. That's what the E.D. at the end telling you that was past tense, not present tense. So we're going to look at that to understand exactly what that is, that is saying. Genesis 2 says, it says, in Yahweh God formed, formed, F-O-R-M-E-D, man from the dust of the ground, telling you this already had happened. That's what he's doing. But, but what, well, what teachers like to do, they have misunderstood the words and the construction on how the words is actually constructed together in the etymology of the word. But this one don't even need to be even checked because once it put ED on it, that's telling you something already past tense, already happened. So it do not say he finished everything in Genesis. So if he finished everything in Genesis, Two, one, one through three, how is it after that he created man from dust to the ground? Because in Genesis 2, 1 through 3, he said he finished everything. So how he finished everything, how is it that when it gets here in 2, 7, he did it again? You understand? You, we, are, we, are we clear on that? Because we really need to understand if he formed man from the dust of the ground, something he already did, and it's at verse 2, 7, how in verse 2, 1 through 3, he done everything and he already, he created everything he was going to create. See, these are the analogies we need to understand and show you how the teachings and the way that people like to teach it is wrong. So he finished everything in 2, 3, in 2, 1 through 3, and he's going to go into the generations of the heavens and earth. So we need to be understanding and we better wake up. However, adding people to this world and even spoken when they were grass. See, because as I said, I do another teaching on this where we we'll go right to it. We're going to look at Genesis 1 and 11. It says, and Yahweh said, let the earth bring forth grass and herbs yielding seeds and the fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. 
What is it saying here? He brought forth grass, herb, yield, and seed. It is not speaking of plain grass, which will, common sense, will not make any sense if you look at it when you look at the same as verse 12. <clears throat> verse 12, it tell you, and the earth brought forth grass and herbs yielding seeds after its kind, and the trees yielding, yielding fruit, whose seeds was in itself after his kind, and Yahweh saw it was good. Grass in many times is speaking in celestial sense, which is telling you about an allegory, talking about people as well as herbs. However, grass and herbs is not yielding fruit as fruit trees. These are seeds is within itself, and what this is speaking of is there is no fruit in grass. However, let's see what this is speaking of, because it tells you all the time within the Bible, Isaiah 40 and 7. The grass withered and the flower faded because the spirit of Yahweh bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. It's making itself clear. The allegory spoken in Genesis is speaking of the people. However, other set were created in his image, but the image of the most high, we are in the image of the most high. Adam and Eve, the image has rules and it comes with eating from the seas and rivers in flesh. Are we clear? The grass didn't have those rules. His image do. Let's make sure we understand that. Let's go a little bit more. Let's go to Isaiah, I mean Leviticus 11 in, the, in 12. It says, whosoever Whatsoever have no fins nor scales in the waters, it shall be an abomination unto you. If anything's coming from water, sea, or river, and it has no scales, no fins, pass it up. These are to be hated for consumption to you. Not the creation, but for the food should be sickening to you. Why? <clears throat> it's clear. Genesis 127. So Yahweh created man in his own image. In his image, Yahweh created he him, male and female created he them. That's why. The Most High created you in his image. In the image he created male and female. Those bodies come in the form of their, in the, who, they, who do they belong to. Let's make this clear before we move forward. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Know ye not that your temple of you, you, ye are the temple of Yahweh, that ye, ye are the spirit of Yahweh dwelleth in you. This is clear. So him and he that dwells in, in, in them, if ye defile his temple, as he said, he destroys it because it has no use of something that is trusted to you and you defiled it. Are we clear? 317, if any man defile the temple of, of, of Yahweh, him shall Yahweh destroy, for the temple of Yahweh is holy. Which temples ye are? Now, so we want to keep the most high commandments, and if we use what we what, what, what we have set before us, we can make sure that we can be preserved in those ways. Because we want him to preserve us. This will be our righteousness by what? Obeying him. He makes this clear. Because when we're looking for righteousness, his righteousness is obeying his word. Let's go to Deuteronomy 6 and 24. It says, And Yahweh, Yahweh commanded us to do all his statutes, to fear Yahweh our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. Why? He commanded us this way. It shall be our righteousness if we observe and do all these commandments before Yahweh our God as he commanded us. See, now people are going to tell you all kinds of different things, but you see it here in scripture. This is one of the reasons I, 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 I tell people, don't never run out of scripture. It's always your protection. Why? They'll tell you righteousness is doing other things. It's telling you what, what, how you get it right here. He commanded us to do all the statutes and to fear him to where he may preserve you alive. 
and it shall be your righteousness. If you observe and do all the commandments before Yahweh your God that he hath commanded you. This is clear in scripture. Clear. This is the righteousness the same as Abraham our forefather obeyed the most high. This is why he did Abraham the same exact way. Let's look at this. Genesis 26 and 5. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my, my statute, and my laws. What did he do? He blessed Abraham and multiplied his seeds as the stars of the heaven, which is us. This is why you see where you see uh, Genesis 26, 4. I will make thy seed multiply as the stars of heaven and will give, give unto thee Thy, uh, give, give unto thy seed all these countries. You understand that? These countries. And in thy seed, you see that? And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. See, he's making a couple of, a couple of little things here. We're not teaching on that day, but he's saying a lot right there. See, because all these countries in, in thy seed. So he's telling you what's going to be blessed. Verse 5, because that Abraham, what? Obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statute, and my laws. All we have to do is like our forefather obeyed the, voices, the voice of the Most High. Kept his charge. This is all the Most High is saying is to obey his voice. If we are to be his people, even today, that's all we're supposed to be doing, <clears throat> obeying his charge. Jeremiah 7, 23. But this I commanded I them, saying, obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you. See, he's not asking us anything. He's commanding you that it may be well unto you. See, we have to obey his voice in his commandments because he is our God. And the main reason why we made a well, our forefathers had made a covenant with him. So with this covenant, however, we don't want to keep it. See, this, this is kind of what the problem is. But when they made a covenant, and we're going to get into an inheritance, we have to keep the covenant that they made. Exodus 19, picking it up at five. It says, and now therefore, if we obey, if ye, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. He's making two things perfectly clear here. <clears throat> the Most High did not command, he did not command this. It was offered. So this wasn't by force. He said, if you will obey his voice. See, he, he, he didn't command you to do anything. This is what our forefathers, this was set before them. Not before you, set before them. Then you would be a, a treasure unto him above all people of the earth. However, once that vow was made, it must be kept. That's the key that we need to understand. Once that vow was made back then, it must be kept. Why? Because that is our inheritance and that's where we came from. That's why it trickled down. Let's go, let's go a little bit further. Verse six. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. <clears throat> Excuse me. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto who? The children of Israel. So we're supposed to be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. So Moses called everyone 
all the elders and all Israel. And what did he do? Verse seven, and Moses came and called all the elders of the people and laid before their faces all the words which Yahweh commanded him. He commanded him to bring and make a proposal to us. An offer for marriage to be what? To be one with the most high and to death. And some for everlasting and some to death everlasting. As we want to say, Moses came and popped the question. That's what he did. Let's look at verse eight. Let's see what our response was, what our forefathers' response was. And all the people, so all our forefathers, all of them answered together and said, all that Yahweh has spoken, we will do. I do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto Yahweh. So we answered what all, all of us said I do. So Moses told the Most High, said yes. So this is what the thing in the seas and the rivers without fins and scales are an abomination to you because now you join together. You're one. You're one with the Most High. See, this is the key. Because once you say it, as I said, he don't no longer look at two, he look at you as one. And if you're with him, that's an abomination to him, that's an abomination to you. The same as people who say, well, when we marry, we become one, same thing. You saying this identical thing. We using his blueprint because we married to our God. So we have to be holy because what? He is holy. Because 1144. For I am Yahweh your God, and therefore sanctify yourself, separate yourself, and ye shall be holy. For I am holy, neither shall ye defile yourself with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And mainly what he's talking about. So what happened? He becomes our husband, our God, and our desires should be his desires and obey him. We are not to defile ourselves with any creeping thing that he commanded us not to eat upon the earth. This is clear. All the way, always clear. What else he say? He said, for I am Yahweh that brings you up out of the land of Egypt, that bring you up out of the land of bondage to be your God. Ye should therefore be holy. For I am holy. And what he's saying, because he is the one who brought you up out of bondage to be our savior, he is holy. So we are to be holy. We need to understand what actually holy means because most of us really don't know what holy actually means. But we're going to get understanding on this as we go through it. As we go through this teaching. We're going to actually learn that holy really means, and it really means one separated sacred. That's what that means. One separated and sacred. So what is that? So we can see it's working, meaning that one be one with him. Meaning holy as simple, one sacred, one. Meaning one that is separate. Sacred, one of the same. See, most people go, oh, this is the most holy, this is, no. And, and they say a lot of different stuff to try to make it mean something else. But that's all it, what it actually really means. And we're going to see examples and we're going to get the understanding on that all because we need to understand what is our purpose here on earth. Let's go to 2 Maccabees 6 and 11. We're going to see a, a small example of this. And it says, an other that had ran together into the cave nearby to keep the Sabbath, they secretly, and we're going to actually learn what the Sabbath actually means too, being discovered to fill up we're all burnt, uh, burnt together because they made a conscience to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. The most sacred day is separated from any other day. His name is separated and was only revealed, what? Unto Moses during this time. The name salvation or Yahweh Shai was given first in the Old Testament. Now I say that again. 
salvation or Yahweh was given first in the Old Testament before before the generation was born, even before the sacred name was given. It was revealed actually first in in our Exodus six three, as we're gonna see. It says, And I appeared unto Abraham who? Yahweh. He appeared to Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of what? God Almighty. But he's gonna make himself clear. But by my name Yahweh, because the V is actually silent, but that's beside the point. Was I not known to them? He appeared to our forefathers as the Almighty Most High. However, by the name Yahweh, he was not known to them. In this, both names were back here, and another name was also given, even back here in the first five books. What name I'm talking about? Yahweh Shai. Or, which means salvation. See, these names are all given back in the first five books in the law. He cannot go outside of the law and go into the prophets without setting it in stone first in the law. Are we following? Because if Yahweh Shai is not in the law, it's not valid in the prophets. Are we together? Let's look at this. Let's go to Numbers 13, 16. It says, these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. Moses called Oshe, the son of Nun, Yahawashai. See, you see how, 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 how it's labeled out here. This is, this is, this is the difference here. Yahawashai. Moses called Yahawashai meaning salvation. Salvation was coming based on what was happening. So Moses changed his name to what? To the sacred name separated from any other name. This is, this is, this is what's going on. This is why we need to understand that. This is why we need to make sure we go through and make sure we understand what is happening. Are we clear? See, because it is not to be profaned by any way and by anyone of Israel. It is holy, it's sacred, it's separated from all other things. These are the things that people really try to find out where they sit there and think that Yahweh's name only came up in New Testament. But let's get some understanding here. Let's get some clear understanding. Let's go back to Leviticus. And he said right here, Leviticus 22, 32, neither shall ye profane my holy name. So neither shall you profane his one name, hallowed among Israel. So it would be hallowed among the children of Israel. For I am Yahweh, which hallow you. What is this saying? Let's move a little bit further and get some more understanding. That brought ye out of the land of Egypt to be your God, for I am Yahweh. So he hallowed us and he brought us out of bondage to be our husband in his name also is hallowed what I'm saying here that's his name hallowed why we want to see it one of the most famous places in the New Testament let's look at it Matthew 6 and verse 8 it says therefore it said be not ye therefore like unto them for your father knoweth what things ye need ye have need of before he asks what is it saying he already know what our desires are verse 9 after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. So his name is hallowed is another name that he do have. So we are hallowed to the Most High. So if we make a vow, we also must keep it because we are in the image of him. So, even if our forefathers made it, 
Who has to keep it? It's inherited. We must keep it. For our God is holy. He's one. As our forefathers are one which we came. So we are to be holy because he is holy. This is our inheritance from them. And ye should be getting the picture, kind of really getting it right now, because this is inheritance. This is what's passed down from generation to generation. Our inheritance is that offer of salvation and being one of the tribes to go into the gates. That's the inheritance that you receive. You're rich. Understand what's going on here. Our inheritance is everything that our forefathers included, everything and also comes with that inheritance also come with curses. So if you be one, the most high, and you already know with, with him and to what he does, and you will not see corruption if you're holy to the Holy One of Israel. Understand, because if you're holy with him, you will not see corruption as he did the Holy One of Israel. Let's go to Psalm 16. Pick that up. 16 and pick it up at 10. Thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Yahweh is holy. And if we're in him and he's in us, and, and the Father is in him, and we're in him also, so if he's in you, and you're in him, and the Father's in him, and he's in you, he would not put himself in hell or leave his soul there. Are we clear on this? If Yahweh Shai is in you, and you in him, and he's in the Father, and the Father's in him, and he's in you, because you are one with them. And he will not leave himself there. Because he's in you. And you in him, and he's in the son, and son's in him. And that's how this goes. Let's go to 14, John 14, 20. And he says, in that day, you know that I am in my father, and ye in me, and I in you. This is why he makes that statement. So we need to be one with the Holy One of Israel to be holy. As Yahweh was one with the Most High, holy. We need to be holy. We need to be one. That's what this is saying. You need to be one with him. Psalms 89, 18. It says, for Yahweh is our defense. And the Holy One of Israel is our King. Who walks in the valley of death with you? We're here right now. You're in the valley of death. And who is our protector? Who keeps your heart beating? Who keeps your limbs working? Who keeps your sight to see? Who makes sure that you can continue to hear? Who keeps you in your right mind? Our King. The Holy One of Israel. Then thou speakest in a vision to thy Holy One and saith, I have laid help upon one that is mighty and have exalted one chosen out of the people. You are to be exalted and in the chosen one of Israel. You are in the Holy One. Mighty is the spirit that is in you. He have exalted Yahweh Shai. He is residing in you. There's only one way and one way only to the Most High. That is through the chosen one that is out of his people. So we have to keep his laws, his statutes, his commandments, which has nothing more than the truth. We have to keep the truth. Isaiah 10, 20, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, 
that the remnant of Israel, because everybody's not going to make it. See, people sit there and say, well, everybody going, the remnant of Israel, such as are escaped of the house of Jacob, shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, or Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. You see that? So the remnant of Israel is to be saved from sin and bondage because you will keep the word of the Holy One in truth. And if you are in truth, and then you will also not commit another one. Adultery. That's Exodus 20, 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What are we saying here? We're going we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna to dig into this. We're going to dissect some of this stuff. And this is the word of Yahweh that the Most High. So let's bring it a little bit closer so we can have a clear understanding because we got we to really dissect this. Let's look at Leviticus to, 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 to really break it down. Leviticus 7, it says, Sanctify yourselves, therefore. See, it says, Separate yourselves and be ye holy. Be one. Why? You got to be one with him, because that's all he's saying. You got to separate yourself to him. For I am Yahweh, your God. So to be holy, because what? Because Yahweh is holy. So we are to be sacred and sanctifies ourselves only to who? Only to him. Why? Verse eight tells you, and ye shall keep my statutes and do them. See, people, well, no, this. And do them. But then, well, no, we, no, we can't do it because it. And do them. For I am the Lord; I change not. Well, but let me tell you what. Well, he, well, Yahushua came and he fulfilled the law, and he tell you in Matthew five seventeen he didn't. For I am Yahweh which sanctified. I he separated us when we said when we said I do, separation. You become one with him. And to do them, and let's clarify this adultery, let's drop down to verse 10 and get some better clarification. And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife. Even he that commits adultery with his neighbor's wife. See, he's taking care of twofold. And I'm, I'm going to show you in one second. And the adulterer, and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. So what did I mean with another man's wife even committed adultery with his neighbor's wife? Basically what he's saying is committing that sexual act with a man's wife and he's covering all bases because he's covering non-Israel and he's covering Israel. Another man's that's all he's saying. Another man. That's Gentile, whatever it, whatever it is. Hamites. That's what, he's, that's what he's clarifying. That neighbor is Israel. That's your brother. So he's clarifying it. So if you commit adultery with one of those, the same as you'll see, the both with, uh, you even see it with um, uh, Joseph. See, now he was in there with a bunch of Egyptians. But did he commit adultery? No. And she was trying to lay with Joseph. But Joseph said what? He was not going to go against his God. Because it was against God's rules. But let's bring this a little bit closer. Let's keep moving a little bit closer. Let's look at an example because a lot of people, they love to use David. They love to use Samuel. So we're going to go We're gonna go to David because this one is a little bit complex. And that's why I want to use David. Let's go to 2 Samuel 12, 14. It says, how it be because by thy deed, by that action that he did, that I have made a great occasion of the enemy of Yahweh to blaspheme. So what his deed did, it blasphemed. Understand what he what, what was going on here. Because by this deed, by his actions on what he did, that great occasion, the enemies of the Lord. What 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 is that? Sin. That's an enemy. That's an adversary. 
of the Lord blaspheme the child also that is born from what? From the deed unto thee shall surely die. So David have done his affairs and provided grounds and reasons towards the most high as an enemy. By what? By blaspheming the name of Yahweh. That's what he did. What was the issue? David was a king. He was representing the most high. And he blasphemed and did the deeds of an adversary. See, this is what David did. And who was going to do anything to him. See, what I'm saying here is, who out there going to do something to David? David was a mighty warrior. And he was king. So who is going to whoop David? Who is going to put David to death? No one. See, but David have to answer to somebody. See, this was the issue that David had. So the most high deals with kings. See, when, when, when there's no one else in Israel who, who, can, who can settle them down, it's, it's the most high going to settle you down. So with David, many acts of insulting or showing contempt or lack of reverence to the most high. This is what David was doing. See, he learned the standards of the Most High in what he did. He slept with a married woman committing adultery. Again, these are things he hates. As you chasten unrighteousness, because that's what he was doing. So if you chasten unrighteousness, it's your own death. They was chasing and they was causing their baby death through what? Toward, toward sin, which is death of the Most High himself. What am I saying? Okay, to understand what David did and what he was doing, the Most High had to take something innocent, sinless. See, sin nature is there, but sinless it was. To sacrifice for his sin. So he brought death into the world by going through Bathsheba. Proverbs eleven nineteen, it says, A righteous tendeth to life. Righteousness tendeth to life. And he that pursueth evil pursueth his own death. So what David did, he slept with his neighbor's wife because he could see her. And he was Israel. And he had him even killed later. Was David in pursuit of life or was David chasing death? David was chasing death. David was a man after the most high own heart. Then what happened here? Because he satisfied the lust of the flesh. This is what David did. And when you do that, you're chasing death, period. He caused the death of his own child and this whole matter really is within a teaching within itself. That's a whole nother teaching within there. Verse 20. They that are forward heart are abomination unto Yahweh, but such are upright in their way are his delight. See, forward here is in disobedience and opposition is why it's, a, it's an abomination. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. It's an abomination to the Most High. Feeding the flesh is a killer to your soul. Let me say that again. Feeding the flesh kills the soul. See, you, 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 you eat to live. You don't live to eat. So it's the same way with the foods. You eat to live. 
He has foods that will sustain you to continue with the flesh. But when you eating those unclean foods because of those which you like or your flesh like, you are living to eat what you want. And you should eat to live, not live to eat. Verse 21. Through hand joined in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. But the seed of righteous shall be delivered. So we are both in on it. We are both clear about this. So do not say that David took her and laid with her. Nothing, nothing to do with this. He called her. She came. No arguments. He didn't take her. She knew what time. He got around her. And this is what the biggest problem is about all things. Nothing to do with it, but he called her and they laid together. Remember, Joseph, the queen, wanted to lay with him, showing that he was righteous. But he lay with another man's wife. So this punishment with David was that child was going to die. So let's make it perfectly clear about adultery. <laughs> Deuteronomy 22 and 22. If a man be found lying with a woman unmarried, who found him? <clears throat> the Most High. He was doing it directly in his sight. To a husband then, they should both of them die. Both the man and, I mean, both the man that lie with the woman and the woman, so shall thou put away evil from Israel. And that's why that child, that's what happened to that child. So if you lay with a woman and she's married and a man and make in uh in uh that made uh her husband and then you actually end up having the husband kill, see different things that happen. But that's his wife. This was caused the separation of the most high in Israel. Even that you today may be around Israel and you may be put out or dead to Israel because you know the truth. Because many people will sit there and say that they're Israel and want to really brag about what they are, but you can be dead in Israel because you know the truth, but you refuse to adhere to the truth. And if you know the truth, then you can't sacrifice nothing because He's not taking something else as a sacrifice. Because Yahweh came to change one for the other. Because now our bodies is the living sacrifice. Hebrews 2 and 26 will tell you, if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there, no, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. You see that? See, the Most High taking the baby because it was sinless. And, and, and as I said, however, there's another. Many will say things about David. But what about us? See, we like to point at David. And they love to look at Solomon. But what about us? What about the woman? You see all the time that's married you see her all the time she can live next door maybe marry or or marry to your relative and you're thinking about having sexual fun or it could be the woman vice versa if they would concede with you and you know the truth some men will be saying, you know, that they've been chasing it up and down the street in their mind all day. 
Same for these sisters. Some of you guys will be doing the same thing. These are things we have to understand. We have many, we have many brothers in the truth. And the first thing they want to do, if they had the chance, they would take it. Same thing with sisters. We have to understand what we are about and get a handle on what he's telling us what to do. Matthew 5, 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. See, this is something that is back there. Thou shalt not commit adultery. See, you heard the commandments within the law not to, com not to commit adultery. Wh whoever, even if you look in lust of a married woman, he clarifies it. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh upon a who looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery already in his heart. And that's where the law is. You commit adultery already in your heart and you have many saying <clears throat> they have the spirit of the most high. Do you? They sitting there telling you they have the spirit in them and they already had this in their in their heart on what they want to do. You see, then this is impossible. If you were enlightened of the truth and then fall away from the truth, you need to really, I'm talking, really understand what the law is of the Most High. If you have the truth. Act like it and not fake it. If not, you're just mocking the Most High. Hebrews 6 and 4, I tell you, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. See, many of us was once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift, the Holy Spirit, and to be made partakers of the Holy Ghost. See, that's what it's telling you. You was given that. <clears throat> so it is possible once to have the truth and be enlightened, and you have been given the gift of the Holy Ghost that's being in you, and you cannot buy it, you cannot sell it, you cannot touch it, you cannot see it. The Most High gives you this as a gift to do His wills, not yours. We are made partakers of the truth you being part of the elect ones. But he goes on more. And have tasted the good word of Yahweh and the powers of the world to come. So you seeing, you feeling what's to come. The same as you taste your favorite food, the same as you knowing the truth. You know what it tastes like. You know what it, how it's going to be. You know how it's cooked. You know how it's filled. Everything. So you know the Holy Ghost the same way. So once you have it, and some, if they should fall away, to renew them again in repentance, seeing that they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put them in their own open shame. What is, what is it saying? You have some that's going to fall away because of the flesh, but then they think, they think, they think, they can repent again the same thing. And you're just making them a mockery of Yahweh shine. Really, that's all you're doing because you're doing it in open shame. Thinking you can go in there and just repent. This is what the stupid do. This is actually what Christians do. They, they, they do this continually. And stupid <clears throat> actually mean Christians. So Christians, if you're watching and you're in it, and if you're being called stupid, okay, you're calling yourself stupid because that's what it actually what Christian mean. So I mean, it's not in disrespect, but that's what a Christian mean. I'm just telling you what it means. So before you um, send emails <clears throat> or anything talking about you're a Christian and this and that, you're not stupid, okay, Christian means stupid. 
So before you send an email, you go look it up and you'll see it. Easiest way to find it is C-R-E-T-I-N, Cretans, which is derived from Christians, which is actually means stupid person. So before you want to send an email, go check it and then check yourself because that's the problem. So when I just say the stupid people and I mainly be referencing Christians, okay, you're calling yourself one. So I don't see the problem, you know? So, so that's the issue that you guys might have within yourself. But then the ones also making the image <clears throat> of Yahweh Shai, the Most High commanded us not to do that either. But who like to do that? Stupid people. Why did they do it? Let's go to Exodus 20 and three. Let's get some understanding there. Thou shalt make no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So he commanded, don't have no other gods before him. But he's going to explain exactly what he's talking about. Verse 4. Thou shalt make unto thee, thou shalt not make unto thee any grieving image. Thou shalt not make unto thee any grieving image. It can't be a dog, a calf, a bull, a man, a woman, a fish, a rainbow, a dove, a cross, a star. Any grieving image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. It's covering all bases. So it can't be none of those things. And you have people who do those and they pray to them. They got them moon, sun, stars, man, cross, they even tattoo them on their body. But he said, what? Thou shalt not make anything in the earth, under the earth. But what about that cross? Thou shalt not. But what about that fish? Thou shalt not. But what if I just tattoo my body with him on it? And now making markings of an image. Thou shalt not. Verse five. Thou shalt not bow thyself to, to them nor serve them for I, Yahweh thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children upon the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. What is he saying? He's getting ready to clarify some stuff for you. Technically what he's saying. So you don't bow down to what you have people bowing down. People bow down to crosses. Man that's on the cross. It's an image. A grieving image. Don't serve that idol. Usually showing reverence. And it is in the temple of their worship. And they do it as they rituals. And he's saying... He is jealous, jealous. And what do jealous mean? He's intolerant of rivalry or unfaithfulness. So let's get understanding what jealous means. Intolerant. So the Most High is intolerant of being compared to what dumb idols that dumb Christians like to do. Talking about three guys as their creators, which again makes no sense because he tell you he's one God, but that's beside the point. Now in rivalry with what? Wood or stone and can't breathe, walk or talk with nothing. And it all adds up to what? Unfaithfulness. Let's look at this a little bit closer because Moses went out of their sight for a minute. Actually, a minute and 10 seconds. No, take it back. He was out of his sight for 40 seconds. And let's take a look at what they did. Let's go to Exodus 32 and 1. It says, when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from out of the mount, the people gathered together themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, oh, make us gods. See that? Because Moses took too long to come back. Make us God, which shall go before us, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, he won't not what is become of him. 
See, this is how flesh works. See, they saw that flesh delayed to come, so they did fleshly things. Who did they worship? The most high in spirit and in truth. However, Moses took too long for them that they made other plans. Flesh moved about the most high is forever present everywhere. <coughs> See, flesh move. <coughs> the most high is everywhere, present always, everywhere. So they instructed Aaron to make to make them gods. How? And if that would be true, they would not have done it. See, if they would have been in the truth, this wouldn't have never happened. But watch. See, we praying to crosses like the direct link to the Father. Why one make these issues to go before an idol? Is this even common sense? You're you, you going you gonna to make a God. If you're going to make a God, why don't you just make yourself God? But they're going to make a God. I'm, it's crazy. It's just pure craziness. Verse 2. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which ye are in your ears, your wives, and your sons, and your daughters, and bring them unto me. So, we also know that not just the, uh, the wives and the daughters have earrings, also sons. That's another teaching within itself. But we have to understand what is happening here. So Aaron did and had them to bring all this gold there. Verse 3. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And uh, love you. And, um, and went off. So, verse 4, And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a grieving tool, even after he had made a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Now, this shows you the, the senselessness, the, I'm talking about just the stupidity of the people. This is all we can look at because they seen what the Most High was doing. They, they physically, they was there and they seen it. This is part of what the problem is. They seen the power of the Most High. They watched him hold back the Egyptians. They watched him when he split open the sea. They watched him when he turned the water. They've seen, they've seen everything what they needed to see. And they go and they make these images. And then they say, these be the gods. Giving his glory to wood and stone and gold. See, Aaron made the molten calf and said to them, these be the gods that brought them out of the land of bondage. Do you, do you really see the replacement? See, this is the same as people do on the cross. He died upon the cross, so you wear the cross. He saved me from death of the cross. So you wear it around your neck. But he actually died upon a tree. You 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 you, you see the you do you see really see the stupidity here on what the stu on, on what they really do? Because he died on the tree. Well, Acts 5.30. It says, And Yahweh of our fathers raised up Yahweh whom ye slew and hang on a tree. So they will continue to tell you he died upon the cross. And then you have some, you're going to some churches and they explain how the Roman build crosses. They go and explain it. You see it in movies, but he was on a tree. 
you do not make images of this either. However, you see they make crosses and a man upon the cross. The very thing you think is, 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 is the instrument used to destroy your Hawashai. Christians, you read it for yourself. This is the problem. He's telling you bluntly not to do something. And you bluntly do it. This is, I'm talking about, we have many people today. We have, you know, a great time and you talking about a great time for your children and not to be taught. This is the time where we break in all type of things. See, we are setting up a thing not just for us, but for our children and our children's children. What? Being taught the truth and get away from the lies. Breaking the cycle of the false truth. That's the goodness of the most high. What am I even saying here? What's, what's, what's happening is we have children that is coming up and only going to know truth. Those are the ones who are going to make, I'm talking about great changes. Those are the ones going to end up teaching their children greater changes. And what? The truth. See, a lot of people, you know, and, and I really do appreciate how, how some people will sit there and, and talk about the way I precept the Bible. I do appreciate that. But it's not me. It's the Most High who taught me. I learned through other people, and I learned through a couple of other ones, but the main thing is he showed me how to make sure we precept this correctly. Nothing to boast of myself, but it's ones that's coming behind me. Oh boy, I'm man, I'm I get chills. The ones that's going to come behind me and all they know is truth. Do you know the way that they're going to be able to precept this, these Bibles? I I pray for for me to see the young brothers that's coming up to see them and to see how they go. See, that's what I want to see. I want to see them teaching. Because they're going to be, I'm talking about how people like to say that you, you're going to get cut. They will be cutting deeply with truth. See, these are the ones I want to see. See, because every generation we should start doing better. See, we, we done been at the bottom. Now we need to start coming up. So this is why we need these youngsters here. We want them youngsters to learn, to, to understand, to know what's going on. Once they know what's going on, they know how to precept the Bible. And then they get away from all this false giving money, false doing this, false uh, your pastors is your shepherd. They're all this false doctrine. Just keep going back around and back over and over and again. And they're sitting there just lying to you and lying to you and then lying to you. This is what's changing. This is why we need to get into these differences. This is why you can go in many malls. You can go in many shopping areas. And guess what? You, you see cross everywhere. Tattoo shops everywhere. People having all kind of stuff tattooed on them. All kind. Of, I'm talking about the, the 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 star of David, the the cross, the cross, the, the the head of Christ. All this kind of crap. It's none of that. You created in His image. So why are you putting it around your neck? Because that's not you, you. You're dealing with a fake, and you got the real McCoy on you. See, in the proof that he said, don't make no grieving images, let's go to Acts 20 and 4. I mean, Exodus 24. Thou shalt make unto thee any grieving image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above 
or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Here it is. He makes no grieving in likeness of anything in heaven, in the earth, beneath the earth, in the water, under the earth. This is covering all bases. And many still will continue to wear them. The most high will look over this is what most people think. Saying, well, it was given to me as a present, so I didn't see no harm in it. What did he say? Don't do it. So strange guys can cause your death. He reside not in temples that is defiled the body. He's clear here. Joshua 24. Pick it up between. If ye forsake Yahweh, so if you Want to go your own direction? Because we're going to put it where, where the ghosts can get this stuff. You want to go your own direction and serve strange gods? See, because somebody, well, I just got it around my neck because I like it. Again, and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt. Who? Yahweh. And what? And consume you. Who? Yahweh. After he have done you good. Who? Yahweh. Are, are you seeing this? So if you want to wear something or such and then turn and think he's going to do you good, he'll turn and do you hurt. See, this is clear enough. See, he's a jealous God. Not here to play with church buildings like Legos. He's here to take care of business. So as he also told, he is a jealous God. We got to be clear, folks. Nymphs 1 and 2, it says, Yahweh is jealous. And Yahweh revenges, the Lord revenges and is furious. And Yahweh will take vengeance on his adversaries and reserveth his wrath for his enemies. Who? You have a lot of, well, I'll tell you, let's, let's look at this a couple of ways. You even have women who love to make their husbands jealous. Love to make their husbands jealous. Get them upset over Silly stuff, thinking they doing something. And you have men doing it too. And they act out of jealousy. Now, he was created in the image of who? The Most High. And the Most High, right here clear, is jealous. And he revenged them who is contrary to him. So, I'm going to ask you a question. Go tell your Howard to stop being jealous. I dare you. He's jealous, but you have women like to sit there and say their husband shouldn't be jealous. You won. This is clear. So when you sitting there and your husband and you doing something that your husband don't want you doing because you over there sitting there chit chatting with somebody and you shouldn't be anyway. And he's jealous behind that. And he's uncomfortable because he's jealous. You need to stop that. Same thing with that man. Because if you don't think nothing wrong and you think everything is something, everything is cool about it, then you go tell Yahweh to stop being jealous. He's created in his image. So if he created in his image, oh, he's going to have his tendencies. Yeah, I was jealous. So yeah, you try to tell me. So that man's jealous and you sitting there and you think, oh, he's just being jealous. Okay. 
He's being just like his father. We need to get a hold on this. Understand, see, flesh, carnal, has taken jealousy and flipped it around on you. So that's why you have some, 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 some sisters, some brothers, they'll sit there and go out with the opposite sex to dinners and different things. And the husband and the wife will know, and they'll tell them, if I can't do this, you're jealous. You should trust me. The question is, why are you going? See, because you might be going for pure, just the enjoyment. He could be going for an opposite reason. If, it ever, if the opportunity opens. But that's not even a reason. If he's jealous, your answer is already clear. Don't do it. So he separated us from everyone. So if he's outside of you and he's not in you, you're an adversary. You indeed to come into the fold. See, cause this is where we need to be at. Because if you outside and you're not inside, so if he's not in you, the son's not in you, so the son's not in you, then he's not in you. You're an adversary. Because outside of his, of his area, that's all we are, adversaries. So we need to be one with the Most High. Second Maccabees 6 and 11 makes this clear. And others have run together into the cave and thereby to keep the Sabbath, they secretly, being discovered to fill up, that all burnt together because they made a conscience to help themselves and honor the most sacred day. What is this all getting into? See, we're going to find out a few things that many people don't even get into. See, the Most High rested on the seventh day. But today, we're going to find out why it's called Sabbath. We're going to find out today why he rested. We're going to find out today what these dumb Christians never figured out. Because today, the Sabbath day is for a reason. And most people want, always want to understand, oh, well, it just means we're supposed to rest. No, it's a reason for the Sabbath day. And we need to understand the reason. So we're going to go through some precepts and see why the seventh day is so important. Are you with me? We, we need to find out why is this Sabbath day so important for you? We need to find out why this Sabbath day is so important to all Israel. We need to understand why the Sabbath day is and the only way you will get it and understand it is doing precepts. Doing Bible relations, oh, well, this mean this and this, go here, and we can make this, say this, and make it. You'll never get it. You need precepts to get it. Let's go to Genesis 2 and 1, and we're going we're gonna to get some things here. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished in all the host of them. So the heavens and the earth was done, finished. Everything else was done. And what did he do? Verse two, and on the seventh day, on the seventh day, Yahweh ended all his work he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Again, when you get down to verse seven, it says he formed past tense and you have Christians tell you he made another man. He was done here. On the seventh day, the Most High ended all the way. He rested. His son did the same 
is why he was teaching on the Sabbath, doing and putting in work, making the most high known. And when he was done, he spoke. This is it. John 17, 1, it says, And these, these words spake Yahweh and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, thy hour is come, glorify thy son, and thy son also may glorify thee. Glorify thy son to where he can glorify him. In what? Verse 2, And thou hast given him power over all, what? Flesh, flesh that he should give eternal life. Key, write that down. As many as thou hast given him. We're going to get in some understanding here. Because we're going to start we're going we're going to start rolling in one second and once I start rolling through, I want to make sure you're keeping this down. So, he was given power over all flesh. In eternal life. Now watch this verse 3. And this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God in Yahweh Shah the Messiah whom thou hast sent write this down keep this verse in your mind make sure because once we hit these precepts everything gonna click in but if you need to go back and teach somebody what the Sabbath day actually means and what it's about, you getting ready to find out because we're going to understand this. So eternal life was the only known true thing about the Most High, Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, whom he has sent. Verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. You see that? So Yahweh Shai had to what? He had to till the earth. See, he, we got to remember, he's the second Adam. Adam tilled the ground. He is the tiller of the ground also. Are we understanding this? See, we, 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 we flipping in and out of celestial and terrestrial. We flipping in and out. So many people who follow me going to catch it. Many who don't follow me, not going to catch it. It's going to take them a minute to get it. But we don't go outside this book. We stay in the book because we want the truth in the book. So as he said, Adam was tiller of the ground. He had to keep the, he had to keep the thing and, and, and dress it. See, because that's why he put him in the garden, for him to dress it, to keep it up. Yahweh is the second Adam to dress it. Tiller of the ground. But watch, we're gonna, we gonna get we're gonna get real, real deep into this one. And then Yahweh Shah was giving eternal life to the seeds in the dust of the ground. So he was planting the seed. In what? In the ground. Some was taken, some didn't take it. Same as seeds today. Some will grow, some seeds won't grow. Same thing. Verse 5. Oh now, O oh Father, glorify me in thy own self. You see this, how you're keeping this oneness with him? With the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Now, this right here is where a lot of them like to jack up themselves. But we're going to get some understanding here because he's glorifying the spirit of Christ. This is what he's doing. Glorifying the spirit of Christ who's with him, who he had in before the world was. Why? Because you even seen it where he even tells you in there, in that, in that spirit came down descending like the, like, 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 the, uh, like a dove. We're going to get an understanding on that too. But just one second, let's finish this verse out and then we're going to come back to it. I have manifested thy name. See, that lets you know when you tell you in he was made flesh. See, it said, I have manifested, I have made known thy name unto men. That's all he was saying, even when you get over to John. This is where the dumb dumbs mess up at. This is where the stupid people screw up at. 
This is why you got so many different doctrines running out there. Because he's telling you right here, I have manifested thy name. It didn't say he changed it to a form and started looking like him and made it known to men. It says, I have made known thy name unto men, which thou givest me out of the world. You see how clear this is? Because he said, manifest, made known. That's all he's saying. In thy word, and thy they were, and thou givest them me, and I have kept thy word. Now he had made known to the Father's name to men in the world, and the most high was in Christ. I say that again. The most high was 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 in Christ. Because the most high is one. He's God. In Christ was the spirit that was given to Yahweh to do the work and do the will of the Most High. Reconciling Israel back to who? To himself. So people say, well, I don't know. Uh, Christ, Christ, Christ is God. No. Christ is one of the spirits that he sent down to put in Yahweh and the Most High was in Christ. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5. Pick it up at 18. And all things are of Yahweh who have reconciled us to himself by Yahweh Shai the Messiah and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Because that's all he was doing. Telling us it's a way to get back. But watch this. Verse 19. To wit, Yahweh was in Christ. So it's telling you clear. Yahweh was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's what he did. This is what he was doing. Reconciling us to him. Christ is not Yahweh. Yahweh was in Christ. The Most High given the power to Yahweh to reconcile us back. And Yahweh, no one is playing when we want to deal with this word. See, you see, Yahweh is nothing to play with. See, this is the work Yahweh had to do and it's set up and complete. He said, it is finished, the work. So, with the power, why was he laid down? And he'll tell you he laid down his life, but the Most High was in Christ, will be able to pick it up again. You tear down his house, and I'll rebuild it in three days. Why did, why did he say this? Let's, let's look at this to where we're going to understand the Sabbath. You know, I take you the long way to where we get to a complete understanding. And it says, And the Father knoweth me, even so... No, I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. So Yahweh is laying down his life for us, not the Father. Yahweh body was prepared for who? For the Most High, for our sins. Verse sixteen. And other sheep I have not are not not are not not which are not of this foe. Them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there and there shall be one foe and one shepherd, which is just talking about the other tribes. Because he told you not to go into toward the Samaritans, which was a mixed tribe. But that's another teaching within itself. Verse 17. Therefore do my father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it up, take it again. You see that? Yahweh gave his body. To do the work of the most high but watch this no man taking it from me but i lay it down myself i have power to lay it down and have power to take it up and take it again this commandment i've received of my father so he completely trusted into the father so this is the power that the holy spirit which is in yahweh so when you see the most high said in genesis 2 and 1 yahweh said in Genesis, also 1930. And what he said, and when 
Yahweh shall therefore have received the vinegar. He said, what? It is finished and bowed his head and gave up the ghost. This is why all this is happening. The body he's given up was the spirit. However, the power was picking up again is the only thing that Yah the Most High did on the Sabbath. Now we're getting a little bit more understanding now. So the only thing the Most High did on the Sabbath is one thing. One, gave eternal life. His words speak life. Oh, we, oh, we getting closer. Oh, we, we're going to drill in on it. Don't worry, but some of us should start clicking now. Let's go to John 6, 63. It says, It is the spirit that quickeneth in the flesh that profited nothing, because it's dirt. The words that I speak unto you that are spirit, and they are life. So the flesh have to be separated from the spirit, the wheat from the shaft. See, it all speaks. That's why he's always talking about these splittings and all this stuff. The, the goat from the sheep. He like to use different terminology to get you on these their better understandings. So let's look at the days to see what this is talking about. Let's go to Genesis one. We gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna pick this apart. It says, and Yahweh saw the light and it was good and divided the light from the darkness. So the Most High created the heaven and the earth in doing the following. And then he called this and Yahweh called the light day and called the darkness he called night. The evening and morning were the first day. So we got day one. All right, we got day one. So evening comes first, morning comes second. Evening comes first, Morning comes second. What had man did? They switched it around. Morning come first. Evening come second. You see how they already switched that? Evening come first. Morning come second. Today, morning come first. Evening come second. Let's see some more. Let's jump down to Genesis 1-7. And Yahweh made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament which from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And so what happened here? So in, in um, all this here, he did this, and Yahweh called the firmament heaven in the evening and morning were the second day. So this is what he did on the second day. You got that? But watch this. Let's move a little bit closer. Let's go. Let's jump down to verse 12. And it says, And the earth brought forth grass, which we already know what it's talking about, and the earth yielding seed, and after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit, in whose seeds was in itself after his kind, and Yahweh saw that it was good. In evening and morning was the third day. So now we got the third day. You see that? He brought forth, uh, brought forth dry land and grass, which we know he's talking about other people. However, this is the third day. Let's jump down a little bit deeper. Let's go down a little bit more. And it says right here, <clears throat> in to rule over the day and over the night, he divided the light from the darkness, and Yahweh saw that it was good. In evening and morning was the fourth day. So he put he put a rule in there, and he did some other things here, which he made be the, he put the lights in the firmament, which is talking about the stars and everything else. But watch this. We're gonna jump down a little bit more. And Yahweh blessed them and said, saying, "Be fruitful and multiply." and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowls multiply the earth and the evening and morning were the fifth day. So the Most High created the whales, the fish, the fowls of the air and saw that it was good and blessed them and, and told them to be fruitful. And then this was the fifth day. Are you with me? Let's drop down a little bit more. So now we have 26. And Yahweh said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing upon the earth. So he made man in his image. This is where Adam and them came in at. Verse 27, and he said, and so, so Yahweh created man in his own image and the image created, God created he, him, male, and female created he, them. 
So he blessed them. This is where he did this. And we're going to see right as we go down to it, we're going to see some of what he did. Verse 28, and Yahweh blessed them and, and Yahweh said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Why? Because he's talking about doing something. But watch this. Verse 29, and Yahweh said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, and upon the face of the earth, and every tree which, which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed, and to you it shall be for me. So this is this 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 is also for learning. So this is the this is the celestial side of it. But it's telling you, the herbs and everything else, they were under you. This is letting you know who is rulership, because Adam is the rulership over this. This is what this is talking about. So the ones that they made there have rulership over everything else. This is why most people mess up in Genesis because Genesis is pretty much an almost completely allegorical book. But verse 30, And every beast of the earth and every fowl of the air and over every creepy thing upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given you every green herb for me, and it was so. So what happened here? We have where he created everything in life in the learning process. So now what we're going to do, we're going to get into what happened, what day was this one. We need to understand what this day is. And let's find out. And Yahweh saw that everything that he had made, behold, it was very good. In the evening and morning was the sixth day. You see that? You see that? See, 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 this is letting you know clearly. That um, the sixth day is when he did everything. But then what about the seventh day? Let's get some understanding there. See, he said, I will, dec I will declare the decree. And the Lord has said unto me, thou art my son. This day I have begotten thee. So we see here now it then came in a lot, lot closer. You see that? So we see here the seventh day he was giving eternal life. But let's prove this. You're in precepts and line upon line here a little and there a little. However, this will repeat, be repeated this right here in Hebrews. Let's go there. Hebrews 5 and 5. As Messiah, as also Messiah glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. What day? See, this is the same thing. Yahweh shall offer this body as a living sacrifice. The Most High raised that body on what day? Let's find out because he's speaking of a day. We need to see the seventh day, which is giving of life. Because he even tells you this, watch and understand. Let's go to Daniel 9, 26, and let's understand what is going on here. It says, after three scores and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war of desolation are determined. So Yahweh will be killed, but watch what happens when this comes in. And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, so now we know in the middle of the week, just keep that written down, which we all going to find out what's going on here. In this way, we should cause the sacrifice and oblations to see in the overspreading of abomination. He should make desolate until the consummation and, uh, 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 and consummation and determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So what happens in the middle of the week, which is Wednesday, you have Thursday, Friday and Saturday, which is Saturday, three days. Yahweh also said the Most High will build his temple again in what? How many days? Three days. He's actually telling you what was going on. So if we already know he's going to die in the middle of the week, and he's already telling you this, that he said if you tear this temple down, in three days he's going to build it again. So he's already telling you he's going to die in the middle of the week. See, he was already telling you this. But we're going to see this even more. So speaking in the truth of the body, and after three days he died on Wednesday, and then three days later, that body was what? It was raised. So again, the Most High do what on the Sabbath day? Let's look at Baruch. This is Jeremiah, was Jeremiah's scribe at one time. Baruch 3 and 8. It says, Behold, 
we are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us for a reapproach and a curse and to be subject for payments according to the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from what? Yahweh our God. This is what the problem was. This is what this is going on. So, what this is, so we paying for, for what our forefathers had done, we're paying for the sins and departing from the commandments of the Most High. Verse 9. Hear Israel, commandments of life give ear to understanding wisdom. You understand that? Commandments of life. So the commandments of life, so the rule is this, a life for a life. So remember on the Sabbath day, he was given life, meaning what? That meaning Exodus 21 and 23. If any mischief follow, then shall give life for life. You see that? So here's how it works. A life for a life. If a life for the most high is one deal, the life for the world is another. So on the Sabbath is given life is more abundantly. If you do the work of the flesh, you will receive the rewards of the flesh. If you do the work of the most high, you will receive the rewards of the most high, which is eternal life. So remember this. If you remember nothing else, even from this teaching, which we're going to see right here on Matthew 16, 24. And Yahweh Shai said, said un, un, unto, unto his disciples, If any man come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. So if any man want to follow him, what he's saying is, you, you literally given your body as a living sacrifice. This is all he's saying. So he said this in Hebrews, and you have to let the most high do the driving. We are just to be the passengers. So whatever, so whatsoever you, your, your destiny will be with the most high and he's at the wheel. It is what it is. It's for our good. Always. He will not steer you wrong at any time, but he has to be the driver. Let's make that clear. For whatsoever, so whosoever uh, will save his life shall lose it. So if you want to save your own life, thinking you got a better way, you're going to lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. So if you're going to save your own life, you're going, you're going to lose it. That's a, it's guaranteed. That's a guaranteed way. However, if you lose your life for the most high sake, you will find eternal life. Meaning many will go after things of this world. Many is going to do that. Thinking this is, that's, the way, that's the way to go. Many are going to do well doing that. However, what profit? What is the profit of it? Because it's temporary. Because this, this world will end. It's temporary. You can gain the world and lose your soul in the exchange of that. So remember the words that's in your heart to be followed. Life and death is literally in motion. This is what we really need to clearly understand. For what should a man profit and he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give for the exchange for his soul? Many have given exchanges for many different things. Some gave it for money. Some gave it for Power, some gave it for women, some gave it for many, I'm talking about different things. Life and death is always before you. Which one are you going to choose? Let's look at Luke 18.25. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a, the, needle, the needle's eye than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Why is he saying that? Because some people are going to care more about what's on this earth. For the purpose on life is according to the Most High. But we will take to be into the kingdom that we haven't seen. But because we don't listen or obey the commandment, we care for the things of this life and for what? 
we do it again for money, not really for understanding what God served for his own and everything that's in her in here. Because here he owns everything. He owns everything already. But for the for but when you're tested, many of us will still take onto other things, thinking we're achieving better, and you're not. You tested, so as you've been tested, you start caring for the cares of this world and not for what his will is. So that's why the rich man even walked off sadly. Why? Because it's easier for a camel. And I tell anybody this, take a thread needle, uh, uh, you know, the ones you, you sew with. Go to the zoo. Hold that needle up next to a camel. Just, 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 just eye it, just point it toward the camel. And he's saying, and you see Yahweh Shai is speaking, it's easier for that camel to go through there than a rich man to enter into the kingdom. Why? Because he refusing to give up his stuff. Temporal. See, eternal things you can't see. This stuff you can't see. That's why when you hold that up, you can see it. And some will always choose the money. Some will always choose the power. Some will always choose the fame. Some will always choose the cares of this life. Temporal. So we have to understand what we serve in. So if you remember the words of the Most High, this is to be followed. This is to clearly to be followed. Let's go to Psalms 50. It says here, O my people, I will speak, O Israel, I will testify against thee. I am Yahweh, even thy God. What is he saying here? <coughs> Excuse me. He actually making a serious statement here. See, the Most High is saying he is God. He's making it plain clear here. But watch, watch the seriousness. And he's saying even thy God. So even if it's another one, and he know it's not, he's his God too. This is what he's saying. I um, am God even. So if it's another one out there, I'm his God too. Drop down to verse nine. It says, I will take no bullet out of thy house, nor his, he goes out of thy fold. Why is he saying that? For every beast of the forest is mine, and every cattle upon a thousand hills. Everything, as he said earlier, this earth belonged to him. Verse 11, I know all the fowls of the, of the mountain and all the beasts of the field are whose? Are his. And what? If I were hungry, I wouldn't tell thee for what? The world is mine in the fullness thereof. You see that? What, he, what he's clearly letting you know, clearly right here, Everything belonged to him. So if everything belonged to him, he told you that you will be obeying his voice so you can live. So don't bring him an offering unless it's your body that you're going to be using as a, as a living sacrifice. This is the problem. This is the issue. Because many of us Always want to find other ways, you know. That's why it's saying you have some people. They go the same thing. They go into these. Uh, they go into these. Uh, these Christian. These Christian churches, and they give money, thinking they buying their way to heaven. What is he saying here? The world is mine. In the foot, everything in it belonged to me. So why in the world are you bringing me this stuff? If you're going to bring it, I'm going to tell you how you're going to bring it, and you're going to bring me the best. 
and I'm going to see what, I'm going to see, just see what you're going to bring me. This is what he's talking about. So we have to remember one thing. Life and death is in motion. Choices in life is in motion at all times. This is not a playground. At, a, at whatsoever. So remember this. If you don't remember anything else. Deuteronomy 30 and 14. But the word is very nigh unto thee. Why? It's very close to you. It's in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. What is he saying? He has set and wrote upon our hearts the commandments for us to do them. For him, not for us, the, you know, not for those lying men, those false teachers and women teachers. He has set before you something. And what did he set? He said, see, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. They're both on the table. The choice is the one, whatever one you want to pick up. Life, if you want to live, you're going to do the will of the Most High. A death, you're going to do the cares of this world. Meaning, whatever one you want, you can pick it up. Some will have the money and think it's their God. Same as some are going to be sex, 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 and, and sleeping with all the women or all the men they can. Some for power, some for fame. All of this world, that's where you will lose eternal life behind it. It is set before you, which one will you be choosing? See, this is a serious part that what we have to understand. When he set this before us, and what he, what he did on the Sabbath. That's why he sit there and he tells you, remember the Sabbath. He tells you this. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Because he will be showing the same love he showed to him. We all being children of the Most High. The same love he showed to Yahawashai, he's going to show to you on the Sabbath. That's why Yahawashai said, you tear down this building in three days, he'll rebuild it. He died on Wednesday. He was raised up on Saturday. These are the understandings we need to make sure we precept to understand why he's saying what he's saying. He can't raise it up on the first day of the week. He, he created heaven and earth. He already did that. But he rested because what he was going to give, he's going to give eternal life on the seventh day. Let's go to Acts. I mean, I'm sorry. We're going over here to Mark. And it says in and Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of the Most High? So people err about the Sabbath in keeping that day holy, keeping it one. Why? Because we think out of all the days, and what he says, even in the commandments, he makes that one day. He said, on the fourth one, remember the Sabbath. Remember that day. That's your key. That never dawned on anybody. Why he just said this all in all the, all the other scriptures. He just tell you everything. Just I'm talking about just lock down, lock down. Telling you don't do this, don't do that. Okay, this, this, this. But then when he get to the Sabbath day, he said, "Remember that day. Keep it holy. Keep it one. Keep it. Keep that separate." This is why he's saying that. That never dawned on anyone. So we are not here to play 
with knowledge of outside books. Because outside books will run you on puppy dog trail. Those run you on theologies, false doctrines, trying to prove what the Bible is saying is true, which makes, again, no sense. And by some man. This is why we have issues. We not studying the book. The one book, one wife, one book, one husband, one brain, one thought, one body, one head. Learn the book on what we need to know. Verse 25, for when they shall raise from the dead, they neither marry nor given in marriage, but are as angels in, are in heaven. So we're going to raise from the dead the same as your shine on the Sabbath day. Plus, marrying is out of the question. So are giving them are given in marriage. You know, you, you, you in the kingdom, you'll see some being together for two, three thousand years, and you always see them together like two peas in a pod. Well, no marriage is here, because we're eternal. See, that's the good part. Verse 26, And as touching the dead, that they rise, have ye not read in the book of Moses how in the bush of Yahweh spake unto him, saying, I am Yahweh of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. Are we are we getting this? See, touching the dust of the ground. He's not the guy to a dirt. It's what's buried in it. Read the book and see what it says. Let's go down. Verse 27. He is not the God of the dead. But the God of the living. Therefore ye Therefore ye therefore great do greatly err. Err in what? Not knowing the scriptures. He is not the God of dirt. Flesh. That's why he says, why you see when Yahweh speaks, he say, when you worship him, you have to worship him in spirit and in truth. He didn't say, worship him in your body and in truth, in spirit and in truth. You see why he saying, therefore we greatly err? This body is nothing but a vessel given for the seed. To mature, to learn to do right. But let's, let, let, you know, we really need to just have these understandings. And that's why I really want that, that Moab really running. That's why I really pushed him for this. Because we have to remember the Most High is eternal, He's not of temporal things. Acts 13 33, it says, but Yahweh have fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he had raised up Yahweh again, as it is also written in the second Psalms, Thou art my son this day. What day? We already know now. It's the Sabbath day. That's why I say, remember that. Remember this day. I have begotten thee. 
So this day, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Keep it one because he will show you the same love he showed Yahweh Shai. We all being children of the Most High in his power. This is all it's talking about. Verse 34, and it says, And concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more turn to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. I'm going to give you the same love on, that I gave to David. So you remember that Sabbath day and you keep it holy. You remember these things and you do not let those go away because he's telling you this is that day. This is the day that you are to remember. Why? Because it's telling you he's given eternal life. It's constantly told you how I I said he came to give eternal life. And you see when you're going to get it. It's going to be on the Sabbath day. Not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Not, no. He already did stuff on those days. The Sabbath day is for the giving of life. Eternal. So we need to understand some of, what, some of what's going on. And, and really, I'm trying to switch over some. And really see what, what, what is happening here and, and, and just really get an understanding basically on what we need to be doing and always understand the precepts of the book. So with that, hopefully you guys got some understanding, but as um, uh, hopefully they did announce, but if not, what we are going to be doing, we're going to be doing a, um, an open house on the Moab. So we have many people who still not in, but what we're going to be doing today, and actually right after the class, which some people can start going over there now once I, once I tell you, and then I'll be over there in a little bit, is that we need to be verifying you. We need to validate who you are. And then I need to make a special uh, announcement to my mom, because I know my mom do listen and she, she watches a lot of what, what I teach her. She's already since then, but... And I know sometimes her uh, she has challenges with the with with her iPads and stuff. But if she can get it, and then uh, if not, you know, just call me and I and we'll take care of it. But but basically, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna have most people go over there to where you can actually sign up for it. So if that's what you want to do, what you can do actually right now, many people can go over there. Actually, to the Mo app is www.mow minus sign ed.com you can go there and you can see right there open house you can still see a link there you click on that you can actually go into the mobile app right now live i'm gonna be coming over there in a couple of minutes and then we're going to be validating everybody who's actually going to be actually giving out the um passwords and everything that'll be given now again if you're not uh, most people would like to leave their cameras off and their mics off Spain, mainly Gentiles or non-Israel. If if you come over there doing that, you're wasting your time because you will be removed and you will not be validated. So that, I do not have a problem not validating you. But I do need to see or talk to you. And then we need to do the briefing to make sure everybody understands what's going on. And with that, we're going to have a lot of people that's going over there. Right now we have it, I think it's 100 that people can come in there at one time. And everybody can't speak. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be taking um, notes to make sure. And also we have um, a couple of other people that's actually working on it to where they'll be taking uh, emails to validate who's who. And making sure that you will be available in the days that is up for you for those for those private teachings. So if you uh, have any questions based on... Um, uh, on uh, how class goes and what you need to be doing, what's needed, all that would be over there. So, so make sure that you go over there and just go over to the Moab and hopefully they'll put it up. If not, let me make sure they're putting this up. And if not, let me try to do this. Let me try to do this for you guys. And dot 
you can actually go right there and you can actually get into the Moab and all you do you click on you click on um, open house over there it should be a link right at the top as soon as you go over there click on that link you can actually go into the Moab and I will be over there in a few minutes and then we're gonna sit there and we're gonna we're gonna start validating many people because many people are gonna get validated because class will be starting this coming week and we're gonna have a lot of people going through here so we want to make sure that everybody who's not validated validated and being briefed and understanding what goes on and as I'm here I'm gonna check some of these uh, these uh, uh, comments to make sure that we have everything uh, that everybody might be needing says however we must assure that we do not glorify brother Johnson but learn and I don't know if that's a brother Terry or sister Terry and I'm gonna tell you they 3,000 percent correct because I am not here to be glorified thank you so much for that uh, 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 Terry and then uh, the matter having uh, gotten a response from the email it's an open house you do not need anything to go in so right now go over there I will be over there probably in the next give me about five minutes I'm gonna be over <clears throat> I'm gonna be over there because I'm gonna be shutting down right here so 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 it's better if you go over there right now and then um, and then you'll be able to gonna give you everything you need to get in and then it was saying blessing Elder Johnson again yeah I wish I blessed the working spirit hey I do thank you my brother Mac and I do agree good lesson now hey thank you my brother Barlow and my husband got a message for the meeting last week in KK Sweat and overseas AMT. Okay, what I need you to do, if he did, if he didn't do the um, the briefing, then you're not in. So I need if you can go over there, and then we just need to be validated. That's the main thing. Just as I said, if I can't see or talk to you, it's not going to happen. I can tell you that right now. Um, and it says the link was open there was a link for the open house okay let me put it up again .mo. and actually I think I can copy this so because I know a few people gonna be asking let me copy this then put it up so that's the that's the link right there to where you can get it and okay so we got some people that's in so I will be over there in a minute and um and we're going to take care of that so what we're going to do it look like everybody else is moving off so hopefully um we'll be going through so yeah it look like every well it look like mostly everybody says so no more questions so it's pretty good so i'm gonna be signing off here and i'm gonna be going over to the moab so I say thank you for your obedience to the moab. and sister for i'm always a, always a pleasure to okay and thank you guys I missed some of the lesson today uh, that's our bright brother Manning that's the best part about the um, the YouTube part is always a recording my brother and um, so what I want you guys to do is um, if you can go over there to where I can validate you because I do want to make sure that anybody want to be part of these private teachings I want to make sure you be validated many precepts I do on on um, YouTube you will not see you will not I would I do completely different ones on 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 the private teachings because we do not do them out in the open and thank you for the sabbath and reading my sister and uh and reading my sister on the lesson every time oh hey thank you too and um so again <clears throat> i'm gonna keep putting this up here and there where you can go over to the moab so as i said a lot of people i need to go over there to where you can start getting and asking for in a, is asking for a meeting ID it shouldn't it shouldn't ask for a meeting ID uh, sister sister Brown it shouldn't be asking for one it should be it should be asking you to go straight in so I don't know what you might have done if you can try it again so before I go I want to make sure that you can get in sister um, sister Brown so if you can try it again because it shouldn't be asking you for anything to go in I'm still waiting to start of the meeting Elder John okay so as long as you're over there I'll be over there in a minute but I want to kind of make sure that sister Brown because it's saying asking for a meeting ID because you shouldn't need no meeting ID to go in there it should be an open thing so what I'm getting ready to do is actually getting ready to fire that one up so I'm gonna be coming out okay Shalom not the meeting ID is for the yes 
Yeah, that. Okay, uh, Sister N N S J. Thank you. Yeah, so trying to register. Yeah, all you do is go over here to this link, and you can go over there and you can get validated, and everything can be taken care of. So with that, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a come out of here, and I'm gonna get ready to go over there. So I'm gonna have to come off of here to go over there. So, and how do I get there with my phone? And if you can click on this link with your phone, you can actually get there with your phone because it covers you all, all the way through there. And, and I have signed up for the Moab and received, have not, okay, again, all I need you to, yes, it is, yes, it's through Zoom. Sister Foreham, it is through Zoom. And <clears throat> you don't need the password over there, but you need to come over there to be validated. So with that, I'm gonna sign off right now. And anybody still over here, I just need that to constantly be up. Hello, Elder, my name is, I would like to join. As I said, you need to be, uh, go over there and be validated. So I'm going to sign off here and I'm going to go over there. And um, hopefully that um, I'm going to leave this and have them to leave this going for a minute because I need to go over there and start meeting with these, with everybody else. So with that, I'm going to bid each and every one a great shalom.